Hi guys, in this video we will be seeing about four components uh, that's motor, motor controller, battery, battery management system. As you can see the motors have initially divided into two, that's DC and AC. DC stands for direct current and AC stands for alternating current. The, the selection of motor depends upon the type of the energy we supply to it. If we are having a DC supply, we should choose a DC motor and if it's an AC supply, we should go with an AC motor. Okay. Now we will see different motors in DC motor. Yeah, basically DC motors are divided into different kinds. That's shunt wound, compound wound, series wound, servo motor and uh, brushless DC motor. Shunt wound and compound wound is nothing but uh, in a motor you have a rotor and then uh, excite, uh, exciting winding. If the winding is in parallel to your rotor then it's shunt. If it's in series with your rotor it's a series and if you have both series as well as parallel then we call it as compound wound. Okay. But in electric cars these uh, three are not majorly used because of its low efficiencies and other uh, factors. Uh, the major motor that we use in uh, DC is brushless DC motor. Now we'll see the functionality of brushless DC motor. Now we'll see the BLDC motor. BLDC stands for brushless DC motor. Unlike the other motors, other DC motors, uh, your BLDC doesn't have your brushes due to which there's less maintenance for it. And compared to other motors, this BLDC gives a constant torque. Unlike in series motor, you have st uh, in, uh, st uh, very high torques in uh, initial conditions, but it drops uh, as you increase your RPM. But for your BLDC, you have a constant torque versus RPM graph. Okay, now we'll see the different components of BLDC motor. Uh, the components of BLDC are stated in your rotor. Your rotor is fixed with a permanent magnet and uh, there is no need of energizing your rotor because it's, as it's a permanent magnet it has its own magnetic field. For providing uh, for your motor to run uh, there should be another magnetic field that should interact with the rotor magnetic field so that there is a unidirectional torque being produced. Okay. Uh, the stator has three windings. The secondary magnetic field which has which has to interact with your rotor is being provided by your stator. The three windings are being energized by your motor controller taking data from your hall sensor. This hall sensor is already integrated to your BLDC motor. Without this hall sensor, your BLDC motor doesn't work because the hall sensor gives the position of your rotor to your motor controller. And depending upon the position, the three, any two windings of this stator are, will be energized and the magnetic field that is being produced with this stator windings interact with your already existing rotor magnetic field and produce a unidirectional torque. We have seen uh, the BLDC motor in DC. Now we will discuss the two types of AC motors. Okay. There are two classifications of AC motor, induction motor and synchronous motor. Synchronous motor, we call this kind of motor synchronous motor because they only run at synchronous speed. But whereas your induction motor will run less than your synchronous speed. Now we will discuss the construction and uh, principle of operation of induction motor. The stator shown on here has your windings, okay, and these windings will be energized by an external supply. When uh, now we'll discuss the how your induction motor rotates, okay. When you're giving supply to your windings, the uh, because of the current flowing through the windings, there's a magnetic field that's being generated in the windings. The generated magnetic field will in, uh, in turn link with your stator. And because of the interlinking of the generated magnet, alternating magnetic field to your stator, 
there is an EM, induced EMF in your rotor. This induced EMF will in turn generate a current that is flowing through your rotor. And the uh, current that is being generated produces a magnetic field. So, the, that, there are basically two magnetic fields that is being generated. One is the magnetic field that is coming through your winding and the magnetic field that is being generated by your induced EMF. The magnetic field generated by stator and the rotor interact with each other and they produce a unidirectional rotation. This unidirectional rotation will in turn uh, lead to a unidirectional torque. This is how the induction motor works. Till now we have seen how a BLDC motor works and its operation and uh, induction motor and its operation. Next, we will be seeing the motor controller and how it works. Now we will see the motor controller. Uh, this motor controller is specified to our BLDC motor. Okay, we have already seen what BLDC motor is. Now we will see the motor controller. The, as you already know, the motor has three windings. Okay, these three windings, let's assume it to be UVW. And the three windings wires are directly connected to this motor controller. That's UVW. It's already shown here. And this has, and the, uh, the motor controller already has two more terminals. One is that goes to battery positive, and the other goes to battery negative. And this one is your fuse. It's uh, this fuse is rated for 150 ampere and uh, it differs uh, to the kind of how much current is drawn from your battery. It might be 100 ampere, it might be even 200 ampere. Depends and differs from each case. Uh, and uh, the motor control ha also has three terminals of outputs. These uh, we'll discuss in separate session what does these three connectors do. And you also have a Bluetooth dongle connected to this. Uh, with this controller, this is a Kelly controller, uh, like the uh, company name Kelly manufactures it. Uh, there is an app for this uh, Bluetooth and you can directly connect it to your phone or your Android. Uh, it has an on Android app and you can directly connect it to your phone or your system and uh, get live data. For example, your motor speed, your uh, battery terminal charge, I mean, battery voltage charge, etc. battery consists of three major components that is the anode, cathode and the electrolyte. An anode which is also called as the negative terminal of a battery is the source of electrons. The cathode is called as the positive terminals and the electrolyte is the conducting medium for those electrons. Now uh, at the anode the generation of electrons takes place whereas the electrolyte uh, uh, here as we can see which is a combination of uh, manganese and ammonium chloride is nothing but uh, a medium which helps in the movement of ions and thus helps in production of electrons. Uh, the typical direction of the flow of electrons is from anode to cathode. That is, the, uh, at, at, at the anode, the electrons are generated and since they are negatively charged, they have a tendency to move towards the positive terminal. Whereas in the conventional direction of a current is opposite to the direction of the flow of electrons. As discussed earlier, the electrons flow from the negative to the positive terminal. However, while we are uh, displaying the direction of current, we show that the uh, current flows from the positive to the negative terminal. Uh, now, whenever a load is connected between the positive and the negative terminal, uh, the circuit closes and hence the battery starts working. That is, the uh, medium uh, helps in the exchange of ions, which in turn leads to the production of electrons, and hence there is a difference of potential, uh, therefore the current starts flowing. That is the typical working of a cell or a battery. Moving on, we look into the classification of batteries, which is nothing but the rechargeable batteries and the non-rechargeable batteries. The non-rechargeable batteries are also called as the primary batteries. They are named as non-rechargeable because the chemical reactions which take place in a battery uh, cannot be reversed in non-rechargeable batteries. Hence, once the chemical reactions are exhausted, such batteries stop powering the load. However, in the rechargeable batteries, the uh, chemical reactions can be reversed with the help of providing a current to the battery. The, uh, the rechargeable batteries, example lead acid or lithium ion batteries are in wide range, uh, find a wide range application in electrical vehicles. However, the uh, lithium ion batteries are more in use because of its higher efficiency when compared to the lead acid battery.
Okay, so we are going to show you the lithium-ion battery given to us for the eBaha competition. Uh, as discussed earlier, a battery is nothing but several cells that are connected in series. So uh, this over here, there are uh, four cells of 12 volts each that are connected in series, which gives us a total of 48 volts. And this is the battery management system, which helps us to uh, control several parameters such as the battery voltage terminals which we will talk about later what exactly does a battery management system do and apart from that uh, uh, as we can see these are the two terminals of the battery the red being the positive and the black being the negative these are the two terminals which go to the motor controller uh, at the respective places Now we'll look what is a battery management system. The battery management system, as the name suggests, is nothing but an electronic management system which is used to control the battery or manage a battery. This uh, management system helps us to set the limits of the voltages, temperatures and other such parameters. Uh, why uh, do we require a battery management system is because when um, an individual would want the ba uh, battery voltage to be restricted up to a certain uh, voltage or to a certain value, uh, that can be done with the help of the battery management system. When the battery management system is integrated with batteries, it is called as a smart battery pack because uh, it helps us to control the voltage, the temperature and other such parameters thus helping us to operate the battery within a safe operating region.